Mathis and my business is Highland Colours. Thank you for joining me for this fourth episode. Um, today I, I just want to talk to you about all the leftover bits of wool that we get as hand spinners and we don't know quite what to do with them. Uh, if you're anything like me, if you buy a fleece, you will open it out and you will remove from it the pieces of wool that you want to use in your project. So you'll be taking the best of the fleece and you'll be carding that, washing it, carding it and using it in some kind of yarn for knitwear or whatever it is. And if you're like me, it's hard to take the rest of it and to actually just throw it away. And so some of it does end up on the compost heap because there are bits of vegetation and other things that are hanging onto it. So <laughs> out it goes. But there will always be leftovers in a fleece that we just can't bear to throw away. So my storeroom is probably like many of your storerooms where it just fills up with this sort of thing over the years. So a little while ago, I took myself in hand over this. I had seen um, online some peg loom rugs and I just thought they were the most beautiful things. They're rustic, they just showcase the yarn and they're just beautiful. So I just thought, well, this is, has to be the way forward for me. So um, I have already got an Ashford Country Spinner and I decided to take these bags of discarded waste fleece and to spin them up in a very rustic and thick, uh, very quick spinning uh, style where the yarn might be, you know, quite thick. Um, I'm going to show you the yarns and I'm going to show you the loom that I bought. I did uh, start my weaving life with a Glymacra standard and I moved down to a Glymacra ideal. And then I moved down to a Glymacra table loom and then I bought a rigid heddle loom. So as the years went by, my weaving became more simple because it, for me, it's really about the yarn. I wasn't so interested in the weaving. So the more simple the process is, uh, the better from my perspective. Now, uh, I'll just show you a, a seat pad that I did weave on my um, peg loom. Uh, I, this is just literally waste ends. This is Shetland. Um, this is Leicester Long Wool, Hebridean and Ryland. So that's just a very simple 15 inch square seat pad. Um, and I really like it. <laughs> so I'll show you the loom. I decided to go out and actually buy one. You can make these, and I don't think it's very difficult to make them if you've got a drill and a drill press. Um, you could, in fact, you probably wouldn't even need to have a drill press. You might, if you've got a very steady hand, be able to make one without that. Um, I decided to buy one. I bought this from Dale's Looms, and it's made of elm. I wanted a hardwood one, so that's why I went out and bought it. And they provide all these pegs to go in here. Now, there are different spacings and they give all the pegs for the different, um, well, there's two different size pegs. This peg goes in this one and this one. And they provide you with enough pegs to do the whole row. Um, and that peg there is a more slender one. Now, I've never used this row because my projects are always a lot heavier so oh, that's fine um, I did pick up on YouTube one of the tutorial videos which said number your pegs so that's what I've done I've numbered them all along the top um, and the reason for that is because as you're weaving you could easily pick one out and then you pull the next one out to slide your warp down and then you could easily do that and cross them and I actually did that on my first rug and I ended up with a crossed warp, which you really don't want. Um, so by putting the numbers in, that eliminates that. Dale's Looms um, provide you with this wee little hook here for threading the warp. And this is just literally cheap cotton 
yarn of eBay that I bought on a cone. I think it was like eight pounds for a whole cone of it. It's very strong and it's black and that's just what I wanted. I have a doubled up piece here and I've made it a good bit longer than what my project's going to end up being because I want ends that I can tie off and weave back in. So just bear that in mind when you're putting your warp on. So I uh, will show you how I do that in a little while. Just set that down there. What I really want to, to talk about is the yarns. Now, a lot of people will just twist the fleece as they go um, and put, put that in. And you can do that. I wanted to spin them for two reasons. One is that I wanted the yarns to be very strong. I didn't want lots of breaks in the yarn because um, it's, it's not packed down with a reed. When you weave on a floor loom, you're whacking it down with a reed and a beta bar and there's some weight in there and you pack it down pretty hard. With this, you're just packing this down with your hands. Um, which is why you need to have a strong warp on here. Don't go for anything that's flimsy. Um, I just felt that if I were to spin this, that I would not only have one continuous uh, piece of yarn, which would be much, much quicker to weave with, but also uh, it does give that strength. So that's why I've gone for this. Now for this project, which I'm doing, I'm making a cushion cover and I'm not using all the pegs. I have, um, this, this loom is 35 inches in length and I'm using the three quarter inch spacing. There's three quarter inch and one inch spacing here. And I would use the one inch for a rug and the um, cushion cover, I'm using the three quarter inch spacing and I'm going for 22 inches of um, width for the cushion cover. Um, now this, I'll just show you these yarns. This is a Cotswold and it is the, the roughest, uh, coarsest wool. And really, if I wasn't making this with uh, this kind of yarn I would be putting this on the garden because <laughs> there's not much else you can do with it um, but I'm very happy with that because it's got a lot of texture and it's rustic looking and I like that so then I have another one here which is a Hebridean and you can see the heathering in that yarn there I hope and you can see also how very roughly spun this is some thick bits some thinner bits i don't worry about that at all because by the time i've packed it all down that all disappears and also what you can do is you could use this doubled um, instead of weaving with one strand weave with two strands so that's an option as well if you're using the thicker sp the wider spacing and you want a thicker finish to it. It does use up the um, yarn very fast. So actually that's good, isn't it? Because we want to get rid of all of the little bags that we have of yarn. So, of fleece, sorry. This is um, a grey Wensleydale. You can see all the little locks poking out of that. And I just love that one. Then I have a white face woodland which is very fuzzy and one more here oh no two more i have this gotland which i really like that one is really good for a rug and those locks they're anchored in really well in fact this bit of gotland fleece was so felted i couldn't do anything with it i i actually could have felted it into something as it was but i actually ripped the, the fleece apart into strips and then I spun the strips and I think it came out pretty good. I'm pleased with that. And then here are these two. That one is the neck wool from round um, the neck of a fleece of um, Ryland. Yeah, had to think about that one. Um, 
and this one is North Ronald C. So as you can see, everything can go in. Nothing is, is unsuitable for this sort of project. So we've got quite a nice pile and a spread of colours and I um, will now move on to showing you how I go forward with this project. I've begun a little bit of weaving now on this peg loom and as you can see the warp threads need to go away from your weaving side so as you lift the pegs out and advance the weft onto the warp that you're not actually having it all land in your lap. It needs to go um, away from you. Um, I, now I've just done something here, which is a little bit of a new idea for me. I did see it online, but it's a bit of a hack. Now I don't like the idea of these warp threads just hanging loosely behind and having to advance the weft onto them and have them all sort of flapping about. So I decided to tension, as you see there, the end of these threads on a makeshift warping beam. <laughs> now I'm just going to, excuse the shaky camera, but I'm gonna walk along here so that you can see that this is the most crude thing, literally have an old piece of wood and I have put some screws in it and this is an old piece of a curtain pole and I've clamped the piece of wood down to the table and then I have looped the warp threads around the end of the beam two at a time just to give it some tension. So now when I start to pull the weft threads down here I'm hoping that that's going to be a lot easier. I'll let you know. So as you can see, I have advanced the um, weft onto the warp strings here um, a little bit because I've done a few more inches of weaving. Now one of the things about this hack of mine is that you do have to release the tension on the pole at the bottom here in order to advance these um, wefts down them because you have to pull these pegs out so if you've got that really under tension, you're not going to be able to pull that out. So that's just something to note. And I'm just in the process now of working down. This is why <laughs> that, that got crossed there. That's why we need to have the numbers in the top. So that's very handy. It does speed things up for me. And I will go back down to the end and just put some tension on those threads in a minute. I'm just showing a little bit of this and then I will finish it later. And I'll show you the finished product. It's delightfully simple. This is a really good way for children to learn to weave. Just checking my numbers. Right, so those pegs are all back in there now and I'm just going to show you how I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on that and then just hack that a bit. There we go. 
you can see in here the warp threads are showing at the moment but when I'm finished packing that down towards the end that will all um, compress so hopefully you can see how that works and it just helps to keep it tidy to have that warping piece at the end it's not really completely essential but it's just for my own benefit to just keep it all in one space so I'll come back when I'm a bit further on in this project so I've just um, positioned the camera here next to the wheel so that you can really see hopefully the close-up of what I'm doing with this really chunky yarn I've got the um, dry fan onto the largest um, groove here which means that that's the slowest uh, setting for the wheel to go around because I don't want it to go very quickly and I've attached a I tried to attach a piece of Scotland fleece and here we go okay so as you can see I, I am literally letting loads of it through so this kind of spinning is very quick but what I find with this wheel is that the take up is not brilliant. After a little while, this tension band here becomes quite loose, as you can see, and it doesn't really do a whole lot of anything. I have tried to alter that by adding an additional piece of leather in there, but it's still no use. So actually what I need to do is to take this off and put a new piece of leather on there I think but what I do to get it to take up is I mean this is literally how much is going in here at once can you see how how wide that is it's really very wide now that's just not going to pull in it doesn't matter what I do it the tension won't pull it in um, probably because there's too it's too thick maybe so I just hold that and carry on pedaling. So it's a little bit um, annoying. <laughs> and if you have a different jumbo wheel to me, then maybe you don't have that problem. And maybe Ashford has come out with something to help fix this. I don't know. But that's how I do it. And you can see I'm letting all kinds of will go in there and with as many of the little blocks sticking out as possible so that's all i'll do for now but you can see how this builds up very very fast oh, i do a little bit more perhaps and then i can use it to weave with this gotland is a wonderful um, wool for this type of project because it's got lots of lovely little curly locks in it and there's also a luster to the wool which makes a nice rug so anyway i hope that helps to explain what i mean about using up old pieces of fleece
I've been um, weaving a little bit more of my cushion cover uh, uh, since I last showed you this and I have got the first uh, cushion side done which I'll show you in more detail in a minute and then because I want two separate sides to the cushion rather than one strip that I fold together I have put a um, spacing area in the middle of rag rug so I just took some um, ripped up old sheets and I've woven those in there for 10 inches and when I take this off of the loom I will split that in half and darn the ends into each side so that I end up with two cushion sides. So I'm just going to do a little bit of weaving now and see if I can finish this side. So I'm just showing you from this angle the weaving and as I'm weaving I'm pushing the, the weft down. I hope you can see that. Um, here is the spacing with the rags and then here is the other side to the cushion cover. And this is where having this warping pole pack is really helpful for me because it gives me some fairly taut threads to push this weft down onto and it makes the whole thing just that little bit easier to do. You don't strictly need that warping um, beam there but and actually I don't have it attached when I'm weaving. I only attach it when I'm advancing the weft so I hope you can see that okay. So that's how far I am at the moment. And when I've finished these two panels and I've cut them off the loom, I will show you what I'm going to do with them. here I've finished these two sides and hopefully they'll go together with a feather cushion filler in the middle and I will show you them when I've got them together. Now one of the things that I could have done which would have made this better is I could have left longer ends. I actually ran out of um, warp. I misjudged 
So that's something to remember to leave lots and lots of space for yourself on your warp. Um, I don't think it's going to matter on this because these two sides are going to be attached together and these are all going to be turned in and, and woven in. So I don't think that's going to matter. So that's going to be secured. But if you were doing a rug, it would matter. So something to remember. And I think it's come out quite well. I'm really looking forward to using this. Thank you for joining me for this episode. And uh, I just wanted to say um, in conclusion about this that I will be finishing this project in the next episode. I've ordered a cushion filler for it. Um, I went up a size from what I've got here. So I've got 22 inches, but I ordered a 24 inch filler so that I'd be sure to have lots of feathers in there. And also I just want to say about the weight of this. I weighed these two sides together and they weigh 2.2 kilos, which is quite heavy for a cushion. So this is not going to really be um, a small scatter cushion that you throw on your sofa. It's going to be more of a permanent fixture and also it could be used on the floor. If you were making um, a rug, then this would be very suitable for actually using as a rug or a chair pad because it's very thick and very spongy and it's very densely woven and packed down. So there's no holes anywhere in this. It's just a really good feel to it. Um, and I will show you in the next video how I attach these two sides together and put the filler in. Um, I, if you were going to be doing um, a more of a scatter cushion and you wanted this kind of look, you could do it at maybe 18 inches or 20 inches. And I would suggest that you use the smaller peg spacing with the smaller pegs and use a slightly finer yarn than this, which would be very easy to do. So that is uh, almost concluded and come back and join me next episode to see that being finished. I just also want to say that I spun up this yarn from the big um, bat that I was carding in the second episode. Uh, the bat that is uh, was um, dyed with the buckthorn bark and had the sari silk and the um, camel down and silk all added in there, Shetland Merino blend. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, it's got the flecks of the rainbow colors in it and I really like the way this has come out it's very soft to the skin um, there's a th at the moment 380 grams there which represents two full spools on my Ashford e-spinner um, I've got more to go so I'm hoping to get about a kilo out of this um, fiber that I've put together so I will also be revisiting that and next episode I hope to go back to the dye pots with the cherry bark and the walnut shells so we can see what comes of doing that and if you've enjoyed this video please think about hitting the subscribe button and um, I look forward to next time thank you